Hi, so I want to give you another one of these uh, Desmos animations to show you um, an animation of the second type of problem that we were talking about, the two major problems that motivated the development of calculus. So this is the area problem, so finding the area under the curve. x cubed minus 7x squared plus 15x minus 8. And this is just another ordinary cubic. This is uh, the graph of it. And we're only looking between 1 and 4 here. Let me kind of back up here a little bit, show you this. I'll put on the uh, axis that you can see now. Now you can see on the, the, the axes are numbered. Now, what we have here, so this n here is going to give us the number of little rectangles that we're going to use to approximate this area. Remember the idea is that you chop up the interval into a number of pieces, you find the total area of all the rectangles, and then as you let the number of rectangles get bigger, as their width gets smaller and smaller, it seems like that should be a better uh, approximation to whatever we mean by the area under the curve. So for n equals 3 here, since the interval is from 1 to 4, uh, each of these rectangles has width 1, so we can just count the area just by, just by counting. Uh, each of these are squares of area 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So area 7. Now it's important to understand where uh, these rectangles are coming from. In each little interval, we're choosing the right-hand endpoint. So notice here for this first rectangle, it's this point here, 2, 2. For this, this uh, piece here between 2 and 3, we're choosing the right-hand part of the graph. And then up here is the... The last one. Oops. Okay. Uh, anyway, it's 4, 4 there. So we have to have some kind of rule or way of deciding how we're going to choose the point that's inside the rectangle. That's something we'll get to more when we get to integration. n equals 3. And we have to have some kind of rule. Here it's the right-hand rule. We'll go over later uh, how we actually decide, uh, you know, which points to choose. So what I'm going to do now is show you if we increase the number of rectangles. Let's say we go from 3 to 6. Six. Okay. Now we can also find the area here. Each of these has length one half. So what we can do is add up all the heights and multiply by a half. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add all these up. We got two point one two five plus two plus I'm not sure why this one's not going through one point three seven five plus one plus 1.675, sorry, 1.625, plus 4. And that gives us 12.125, and when we divide by 2, uh, it's 6.0625. Now, one thing you might notice is we're getting really a big overestimate because of this last, last rectangle over here. So something you might think to do is say, well, instead of the right-hand endpoint, why don't we choose the left-hand endpoint? Maybe that would give us another idea. So let's do that here. So here we have the left-hand endpoint approximation. And these are all the left endpoints. So just the same idea. We've got these rectangles that are approximating the area under the curve. We just chose the left endpoint instead of the right endpoint. So we can still add these up and divide by, or multiply by a half. So 1 plus 2.125 plus 2 plus 1.375 plus 1 plus 1.625. That gives us 9.125, and if we divide that by 2, we get 4.5625. So this raises a question, and that is that the, the left and the right hand approximation, so depending upon what point we choose to get these rectangles, seems to give us a lot different answers. And one uh, compromise you might think is, well, maybe we'll get a much better idea if we take the average of these two. So let's go ahead and take the average of those two. Originally, we got 6.0625, and then we got 4.5625. If I take the average of those two, I just say, let's take the average, it turns out to be 5.3125. And that's actually pretty close to the actual area. Um, let me show you just an animation here. 
showing you as the number of rectangles increases. Okay, here we go. So you can see here, this is using the right hand approximations. You can see is n. Now we're getting all the way up to 100. Okay, and, and by the time we get you know n close to 100, you can see this would be a very good approximation. We could also look at the um, left hand endpoints as n increases. Notice ap approaching a little bit differently, but also getting very much closer to the actual area. There are a couple other ways that we could approximate this. Um, we could choose the middle point, so we could choose the, the midpoint. So let me show you just what this would look like for three. So in this case, we're evaluating the function at the midpoint, these midpoints. And this turns out to be um, a little bit better than the left and right hand approximations. Okay, so for instance, when we get to, we were looking at six before. If we add these up, so if we add these up, let's see what we get. We get 1.766 plus 2.172. This one is about 1.703. 1.703. Uh, this one, 1 1.109, and there's about 2.547. Okay, those all make 10.438, and then when you divide by 2, 5.219. So, yeah, 5.219. There, actually, there's the, they actually do this for us. So, 5.21875. Now, what I'm going to do is increase this, and I want you to look at these this number here as we increase the number of rectangles and see if you can guess what this number is getting closer and closer to. Take a look right there. So anybody want to take a guess? What do you think the value is? 5.2497704, so on. So in fact, the exact value of the area under the curve does turn out, I think, as most of you would guess from here, 5.25. It's a five and one quarter. That is the exact area, and we can use calculus to find that. So this gives you an idea of, uh, hopefully this animation gives you an idea of this idea of finding the area uh, under the curve by these approximating rectangles.